Hello. Welcome to today's webinar titled Building Long-Term Healthy Habits with a Nod to Busy People. My name is Sulan, and it's a pleasure to be here with you on behalf of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Before I get going, I want to invite you all to open up your chat box. If it's not already open, I'm happy to try to, I'm happy to take comments and questions throughout the webinar in order to make this as relevant to what you came to hear as possible. So that, um, let's get going. When we talk about building long-term habits, we really need to start with the building block. And this webinar will do that. But before I go there, I want to tell you just a bit about myself and how I happen to be um, giving you this webinar today. You can see that I'm a nurse. I have to confess, probably my healthiest habits weren't learned back then. <laughs> I haven't been in a clinical setting in decades, but I've been in the wellness area for the last 15 years. And it is in the wellness area, and specifically through well coaches and other organizations like the American College of Lifestyle Medicine that I've learned there's a body of literature out there, evidence-based, that talks about what it takes to help maintain healthy over time. In fact, my Well Coaches certification comes from the study of the science of health and happiness. So health and happiness, good habits for all. I hope you agree. So it is with my nod to the wellness industry and I will be drawing from other experts in this area throughout the presentation. So let's get going with the why. Why do we want to consider good habits? Over the last year, I think there's probably, uh, we've heard from experts and we've heard from many in the press and from everyday people, just how important our lifestyle or our good habits are in times of stress. Over the last year and a half with COVID, many of us have had to make so many changes, not the least of which is our daily habits. But we've learned that certain things can build our resilience and keep us good, even in stressful times. And not to worry, if you're not sure where to start, we're going to be going through some of the initial building blocks here today. So what about habits? We know that there are good habits and that there are those we could do without, correct? <laughs> Aristotle noted it way back when, in a quote from him, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Excellence is a habit. Excellence is a choice. Let's look at our agenda today. We'll start with how our habits formed and I'll be turning to several experts. Some of it came from my work with well coaches. In addition, there's a lot, number of books out there. I'm gonna be quoting from two, Atomic Habits, which many of you may have heard by James Clear. And also um, Charles, Dun Charles Dunnig, Habit Loop, on the Habit Loop. So we'll talk about how they're formed. We'll talk about which ones are worth cultivating. And I'll be pulling from my well coach's background and some of the uh, wellness, I'll leave you with a wellness site to look at regarding healthy habits that are evidence-based. The building blocks. And I wanna start right now here today with you taking to the time to understand what you are currently doing. It's so important. So what brought you to my webinar today? Is it something that you wanna maintain? Something you wanna do? Let's consider how our habits formed. It starts with repetition. Repetition of what we do gets cemented in our brains. You see, there's millions of neurons in our brains that help us make connections. And when these connections are made, after a certain number of repetitions with a certain amount of reward, be it positive or negative, these habits get cemented in our autonomic nervous system. Do you know what that means? It means you don't even have to think about it and you just do it. Think about some of the good things. Think about when you learned to parallel park. <laughs> 
figuring out how to get right at that right angle. And then after a while, it just became automatic. I think about when you're teaching a child to do certain routines in the morning, how long does it take for those connections to just be made? It's got to be a good reward for doing it. But the thing is, why don't we all just make all good habits, right? Well, unfortunately, the autonomic nervous system and all those neural connections will be remembered whether they are good habits or bad habits. And one thing in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, if many, many of you may have written it if, you're inter read it if you're interested in this area, he says, when you think about making the connections, think about the power of visualizing what's going on in your environment. And he says there are, that in his research determined that there are 11 million sensory receptors in our body, you know, what we feel, what we see, what we touch. And 10 million of them are dedicated to vision. So it's really worth considering that when you wanna make a habit, you wanna cement something, it's your environment you need to pay a lot of attention to in order to cement it and keep it going over time. Then regardless of how busy you are, if your environment is set for it, much more likely to do it. Again, drawing from his book, Hits was released in 2018 and is still on the bestsellers list um, in the journal this weekend. And he talks about how our habits form. You see, there's a cue. What's a cue mean? Something that makes us think about it and that cue causes the craving. Then there's a response, something happens, and then you are rewarded for that response. So it can be very good, for example, Think about the cue. Maybe you tend to get up in the morning and do a good yoga workout, good stretch. So you wake up in the morning, you're craving that stretch, you do your yoga, and it's good reward. But what if it goes another way? What if it's late afternoon and you're tired and it's time that's cueing you and you're craving something, say comfort food. So you go and get it, it tastes good, and you get rewarded. So that gets cemented, but over time that is not gonna be a healthy habit, as you know. But we're gonna talk about how to create good habits and how to change habits, if that's what you would like to do. So this is James Clear, most recent work. And he's followed on the book that Charles du Duhigg wrote, um, The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business. And that was written back in 2012. And in his book, he describes something called the habit loop. There's a cue, sound familiar? There's a cue, something cues you. There's a routine that occurs as a consequence of that cue, the reward, and this pattern repeats. So what you want to do when you're building healthy habits is really consider what is the cue? or your trigger. We know from those who have studied habits that environment is one of the most powerful. So go back to you visualize it. So if you wanna make sure that you start with A, with exercise, how can you set up the environment to do it? Maybe it's putting sneakers right in the doorway. Maybe it's the gym bag, exactly where you need it to grab and make sure the gym bag's all packed, right? Could be time of day. So if you know in the late afternoon that you would like to make a healthier habit than your current doing, then call out, late, it's late afternoon, actually say it out loud. What I want to do is take a good stretch or what I want to do is have an extra glass of water. I do not want to go to comfort food. <laughs> it sounds simple, silly, but when we do it, when we call a complete focus to it, that's where we break that on a economic pathway that's already cemented in a, in a way maybe we're not as happy about. Emotions can bring it on. People who, who deal with anxiety, certain things just trigger it. So you need to call it out. I hope to give you some specific ways. Sometimes it's a person and sometimes it's thought patterns. This is not an all inclusive list, but what I want you to take away from this section is consider what is the cue. 
of what Q you could establish if you're trying to establish a healthy fat. So when we talk about how to create new habits, again, pulling from uh, James Clear's works, he says, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. So when you think about that, if you want to have a new habit, for example, maybe it's regretted snacking in the late afternoon, and your current habit is to go to a certain snack cabinet or a certain area. So maybe what could you do? Think about it. You could put a big X on it. <laughs> well, you could just move the snack food to the very back so it's really hard to get at. And call it out, make it obvious to yourself and replace it with a beautiful piece of fruit or whatever it is you might like to do instead. Sometimes it's really taking the time to think about it. it has to be something you enjoy. So if fruit doesn't come to your mind as something you enjoy, pick something else. Maybe it's a walk. But if you give a good piece of fruit a chance, give it like 15 minutes to digest before you say it didn't work and satisfy you, you might be surprised. The thing in creating a new habit is it has to be easy. It has to be, you know, you're busy. It has to be easy. And you have to get some reward from it. All right, so this is not something that's probably new, right? So 100%, I'm too busy to change my current habits. Are you too busy? Because again, borrowing from the work, habits do not restrict freedom. This is from James Clear. They create it. What do you mean? Think about, consider without good financial habits, you're always looking for where your next little piece of change is, correct? If you don't have good health habits, the chances are you don't have the energy you're looking for. So consider what can you do to be 100% about establishing a good habit? One of the first things, if you really want to establish a good habit, I'm borrowing here from uh, Dr. Michael Pantalon's work. He was, he's the author of a book called Instant Influence. It's been out for a while now. It uh, talks about how to get anyone to do anything fast. And Michael Pantalon is a clinical psychiatrist He's at the Yale School of Medicine, and he's been writing in this area and working in the field of addiction for a long time. He asks you to discover your secret sauce. And I'm asking you the same. When I work, I work as a coach, one of the key reasons is the power behind why you want to do this. So if you wrote something down when you first came to this talk, I want you to take a minute and write down what it is you either want to build or why you want to change. And just below that, I want you to say, why are you doing this? Why would you like to make this one of your habits? Think about it, what would be the benefits to you? For that matter, why are you making any changes at all? 100% are you okay with where you are? Or do you know you could feel better? Probably one of the hardest things to realize is that we have the power to make good lifestyle changes ourselves, but we really have to bring our focus to them. Habits are in our control. So you're going to really want to choose what makes sense for you. So not just what a expert might tell you, but most of us know what we could do that would help us feel better. So it's worth taking the extra time to think about that first step. Now, the real key about the first step is it must be small and it's gotta be very realistic. 
how good does it feel when you know you want to do something and you do it? And when you're talking about a habit, you're going to have to want to do this more often. And very often, I want you to think about the environmental clue. You have to think about where you are now. Many of our environments shifted over the last year and a half, right? So be realistic and think of one small step that could make a difference. It might be even think, thinking, for example, I know I want to do more manageable stress. Well, what kind of options are out there that could work? Would mindfulness work? Would yoga work? You have to maybe start with a list. And after you look at the list, commit to that next small step. Sometimes it is simple as moving the junk food to the back of the closet and putting a beautiful bowl of fruit or making sure you get up and look out the window to change that habit of a late afternoon snack. But it must be realistic. Okay, talked in the beginning about evidence-based healthy habits. And I'm giving you a list here today from something called the True Health Initiative. You can see their website. And I encourage you to go to them if you have not. Basically, what True Health Initiative is, it's a global consensus on lifestyle. And its founder is Dr. David Katz. Um, you may have heard that name before. David Katz is the founding director of Yale University's Yale Griffin Prevention Research Center. And he started the American College of Lifestyle Medicine here in the United States about 20 some years ago. And it is this group of people that have been working on the kinds of habits that keep us healthy over time. So not only do they increase our ability to live longer, but increase our ability to live healthy longer. I'm thinking that's what we all want to do. So the things that are evidence-based are, and these are in no particular order, fingers, meaning avoid toxins, stop smoking, and moderate on alcohol. The importance of what year is on your fork. There's really an incredible amount of data on the benefits of a plant-based diet. So one nod in the right direction could be simply adding a vegetable to my plate each day. Other thing we've all heard about is the regular physical activity. I think no surprise there. Sleep adequate in both quality and quantity. We all know just how good we feel after a good night's sleep. And what about stress? Making stress more manageable. The reason I highlighted it is I'm gonna take a few minutes to build one around there because over the last two years, there's nothing I've heard more than as a coach. What is bringing, what once brought people to my door was you know lose weight, feel better. Now it's like, stress, stress management. And when you get that under control, a lot of things really come together. And the final thing in these evidence-based is the importance of love, meaningful relations, connect, call that best friend. Okay, hope you have one. You, I, basically, I hope you came here with something, a habit you know you wanna create because the best stuff comes from in us. But if not, this is a great list to pick from. And I'm gonna spend just the next couple minutes talking a little bit more about stress. All right, so what I'd like you all to do is assess your current stress level. What's that mean? On a scale of one to 10, one being low stress, I got it all covered, 10 being out of control, where are you? How much stress are you under? Just give it a number. And when you think about setting a healthy habit of manageable stress, on your priorities, you're all busy people, how big of a priority is it to you to manage your stress a little more efficiently? Give it a number, one to 10, one low, 10 high. Got that? All right, 
what's your realistic first step? Think your environment, wherever you spend the majority of your time, what can you do to give better stress management a nod? Say you, I'm gonna give just an example here, but there can be any, sometimes the first step is research, but don't let research take too long. Give yourself a timeline. I'm gonna look at it for the next day, and then I'm going to make a choice. So what if it's yoga? I'm gonna start my day with 10 to 15 minutes of yoga. If that was your first step, what would you need to do this to make it happen? Picture yourself in your environment, getting out of bed, what you, could you do to make this happen? And if you're not thinking about yoga, that's okay. Think about whatever it is you're thinking about. What do you need to do in your environment to make it happen? But one realistic thing might be to wake up in the morning and have a yoga mat all laid out waiting for you. Then you build. Habits that get cemented long-term over time are things that get rewarded once you start doing it and see it regularly. It comes more natural. It's just like most of us have gotten into good exercise areas at one point in our life. So what were your habits when you were doing something more regularly that felt good, that relieved your stress? Because exercise can also be a stress reducer. And if you need to get that into your busy life, where realistically could it fit? And you don't go from X to doing it all the time. So maybe you pick one or two days that are more likely to allow you that extra 30 minutes. Well, it's never extra. You just dedicate it to exercise. What do you do to make that happen? So consider this, to make the desired habit manageable stress. Step one is you make it obvious by calling it out. Write it down. If you have someone in your house that you know would help hold you to it, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe if your friend at work asks you, how'd it go? How'd that yoga in the morning go? Step two, it has to be attractive. You have to visualize the result. Maybe starting yoga isn't attractive. Maybe you think, oh, I can't bend. I don't do this. But you're willing to give it a try. And what you find, you visualize yourself with that good relaxation breath that comes from a deep stretch. Step three, what it is, it make it easy. What first step is doable? Step four, make it satisfying. How do you feel doing this new habit? The thing about new habits is we said, make it obvious, make it realistic, make it attractive. So what if you wanted to break a bad habit? Think about it kind of in the same kind of step care. Make it invisible. So if you don't want a snack in the afternoon, how can you get those snacks out of your vision? Make it unattractive. Consider the fact that if it's not a healthy snack, you most likely don't feel good <laughs> half hour to an hour after it, right? Imagine feeling good. Imagine, imagine the snack in the afternoon, or maybe it's hydration, giving you the lift and you finish work earlier, you get out of work, you can hang with friends, you can go do things. It's so much more in our control, but we've got to schedule it and we've got to call it to our intention. And the other thing is to make the undesired habit unattractive, make it harder to get to, make it harder to do. It's truly more in our control than we, than we realize. And the other thing is to realize what a small step can make all the difference in the world. Now, the small step's not going to be the end game, but you stack other small steps on top of it. And before you know it, you're feeling better and you've created that habit of manageable stress.
by your life by your lifestyle choices. I hope this was helpful information to you. I truly believe, as I've learned more and more as a practicing coach, that healthy habits do add years to our life and life to our years. So here's to you and your decisions. Take the time to assess where you are and know that you absolutely have control to be where you want to be. Thank you. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them now. Yeah. <laughs>